You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products. Bark and Wag is excited to announce our new partnership with a Colorado hemp farm to produce a line of CBD products for your pets. Bark and Wag has CBD pet tincture available in 300, 750, 1200, and 2400 milligrams. Bark and Wag CBD is pet safe, no THC, it's made in the USA, and is CO2 extracted. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, barkinwag.com. That is B A R K, the letter N, W A G.com, to see our line of CBD and awesome merchandise. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise, so anytime send an email to Polly at barkinwag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15 Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to Dr. Laura Brown, owner of Green Tree Animal Hospital in Libertyville, Illinois. Welcome, Dr. Brown. Hey, Polly. Thanks for having me back. I wanted to find out how often should you bathe your pet? That's a good question. It kind of depends on how long or short or furry your dog is, how much they're getting dirty. Like I would bathe Um, I have a golden retriever, so he has pretty long hair. I send him to the groomer for, you know, a haircut and a bath every five weeks. Mm -hmm. But I would bathe him in between when, you know, when he gets all, if I take him to the dog park and he gets turned into a muddy mess or he takes a little swim, then I always bathe after swimming. Okay. um, Because depending on where they swim, some people have pools and they swim in the chlorine. So maybe not a shampoo then, but a rinse off to get the chlorine off. But I will say the hardest, the biggest thing about that too, is it's really important to dry them. So like for a really hairy golden retriever, if you let them stay wet too long, that wetness stays close to their skin. And sort of like if when you reuse your towels a couple times and they don't completely dry in between, you know how they get kind of musty? Okay. Yeah. So does a dog that doesn't get dried out between swims. Little, your guys, your pug and your lab have really short hair, so they may not need a bath as quite as often as a long-haired golden. The other b- breeds that are more need to go to the groomer, like poodles and doodles and um, dogs like Lassas that get groomed, their hair, you know, that they have to have a haircut. Their coat's a, a little bit different, um, so they may not need a shampoo as much. But I will say... It's not wrong to bathe your dog once a week if they have a skin condition. So I have dog, so I have some patients that have bacterial infections on their skin, and I recommend once a week bath with a medicated shampoo. So you have to use a medicated shampoo to be safe because if you bathe them once a week with a over-the-counter flea shampoo, that would completely strip them of their natural oils and dry them out and and be bad. But the medicated shampoos for specific reasons are usually recommended weekly. And the key to those two is 10 minutes of contact time. When you shampoo your dog with a medicated shampoo, you want to scrub it down to the skin and let it sit there 10 minutes to do its work before you rinse it off. So even if, like, let's say I take the dogs and Maddie goes swimming in the Colorado River, are you, and she is, she's a, a lab, so she has short hair. Do I still have to bathe her? I don't know that you have to shampoo bathe her, but I would rinse her. Like, what's in there? Like, is it, you know, certain times of the year, it's a little more, the water's not as high, it's not flowing as much, so, like, algae and junk and mud and all of that get on her. Okay, okay. So, it might be worth a rinse and a towel dry, because she'll dry really fast. Yeah. Um, if it's super high water and it's super clean and you're going to go the next day too, maybe they don't do that because okay. you're going to go right back the next day. Right. Uh huh. You know, I have clients that have a lake house in Wisconsin and the dog's in the water from 
dawn till dusk, you know, all day, every day. I still, at that point, I would recommend um, a, at least a shampoo once a week, probably. Yeah. So uh, we go up to Northern Wisconsin and I, <laughs> I don't even, we don't even have like a hose. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been up to Northern Wisconsin and I jump in the lake and shampoo, you know, wash my yeah. own hair. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's not like the, the soap, the shampoos like that. Then here's the thing too about shampoo in general, the ones that have a lot of detergent in them. Uh -huh. So we'll strip the natural oils. So the ones that have a lot of detergent really lather up really easy. The ones that, and those are the ones that if you do that every single day, you're going to strip your dog of its natural oils and things like that. Okay. The shampoos that are more on the hypoallergenic side, like oatmeal based shampoos, hypoallergenic shampoos. I would say this is one thing. Always use a shampoo that's made for your dog, not your own shampoo, like okay. baby sham not baby shampoo, not Dawn dishwashing soap. But sometimes when they get skunked, you add that. But I will say as a regular, you know, on a regular basis, use a dog shampoo. You don't need a flea and tick shampoo if you're using another flea and tick product. And those okay. those tend to be pretty harsh. And you want to use something that's, you know, sort of gentle slash it may be labeled hypoallergenic, um, oatmeal based or whatever. They're not going to strip the natural oils as much as um, some of the other, like Dawn with strip. And that's what you want to use when you get a skunked dog. <laughs> well, and that's, um, I'm sure like in the eighties when we'd wash our golden retriever, that's what we were using. Right. Like and baby, baby shampoo, baby shampoo. <laughs> right. Well, baby shampoo is a little gentler than like Dawn, but yeah. cause you use it on babies every day, but there's still better shampoos out there depending if you're you know if you're in a bind and your dog's a muddy pig and got just got skunked then use whatever's at hand <laughs> right yeah sure. but on a regular weekly you know weekly to monthly basis um use a dog shampoo and, and how do you know so if the dog starts flaking then you're you're washing your dog too much maybe it depends on, you know, at that point too, if your dog, it tends to have a really dry coat to start with, you know, maybe it may be nutritionally based. It may be medically based. It may be allergy based. So you could make things worse on with a certain kind of shampoo. Okay. So once again, back to your vet to find out why your dog might be flaky slash if they're itchy too, that's a whole different ball game. That sort of thing. Yeah. And I have noticed at like PetSmart and Petco that the grooming section has grown. I mean, you can get shampoo now. Yeah. You know, for any type of ailment your dog has. Right. You can. Um, and so once again, you kind of got to be careful. The good news is it's on the outside of your dog's body. And, you know, if you do one bad shampoo and you don't like it, it's like, shampoo for your hair not the end of the world right you have a bad hair day but you can always fix it yeah sure okay great yeah there's i mean there's lots of different products now for grooming i mean from itchy to if you think your dog has fleas to yeah so right and most of those are pretty safe like you're not going to get in trouble but you just may not fix the problem and right. so that's why you need if you know try it over the counter stuff give it a whirl if it works great if it doesn't then you, then i would say back to your vet to figure out why it's not working sure do most vet clinics have shampoo medicated shampoo we do okay yep, we do okay. Uh, you know and we don't keep the regular old hypoallergenic shampoo because there are other options you can do that at the pet store but we keep our medicated shampoos um, and we have the, probably the most common one I use is for those dogs with secondary bacterial infections due to allergies. So they get a, a chlorhexidine based shampoo. We have shampoos for seborrhea. We have shampoo for yeast infections. We have shampoo for itchy dogs. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thanks for being on the podcast and we look forward to having you back. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15 minute vet talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. 
Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at BarkAndWag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.